Thank you, Vice Chair. I want to thank all of the uh, uh, appointed officials who have done an extraordinary job in helping us to recover uh, from the Maui wildfires. I think everybody knows the story. A very small, discreet, compact town was 100% leveled, incinerated, uh, in a matter of hours. And more than 100 people died, and we are dealing with the consequences going forward. But I want to deal in facts now. Uh, because as Senator Tillis said, the media has moved on from the spectacular and terrifying suffering, uh, and yet people are still suffering. So let me start with Secretary Todman. Uh, how many structures were destroyed in the Lahaina fire? Um, my team advised me that there is about 4,000 residential units that Four, were destroyed. 4,000 housing units. 90% of the impacted area, 2,200 structures, and about how many people does that represent? Um, probably two and a half times that number, sir. Yes, yeah, so it's about 12,000. So the, one of the things that you need to know about Lahaina and Hawaii generally is you have a lot of multi-generational families, so that per house, but the number of people per household um, is way higher. So you have about 12,000 people without a home. And I want everyone to listen to this one. How many homes have been rebuilt? <laughs> um, we took a look at the Maui County recovery dashboard. It appears that there's just one, sir. One home rebuilt. 116 permits issued. Over the last 15 months, 16% of the survivors who are housed, but not in their own home, sorry, not 16, 60% of the survivors have moved at least three times. 20% of the survivors have moved five times. The problem is housing. The Federal Emergency Management Agency did a good job with the Army Corps of clearing the debris and making it safe to walk around. The soil is safe. The infrastructure is coming back online. The problem is housing, and the way to rebuild a community is CDBGDR. And I want to make two points about CDBGDR. The first is the practical impact of a lack of an authorization. We are currently digging a trench for temporary infrastructure with FEMA money in partnership with the county. And it is, I mean, it's expensive to do anywhere, I get it, but it is really expensive to dig a trench on Maui. More than Oahu, by the way. It's already expensive in Hawaii generally. You just, we just picked the most difficult, most time consuming, most expensive place to try to dig a trench. And as soon as we get that DR money, they're gonna have to dig it back up so if anybody thinks a lack of an authorization for this program, which we annually put money towards, it's not as if you're being a fiscal conservative by not authorizing this program. You're just ensuring it is done in the maximally stupid way. We have a bipartisan bill that could fix this pretty narrow problem. It wouldn't cause a penny of additional federal resources to be spent. It would just ensure that when the two secretaries get together and think about disaster response and disaster recovery, that they could do it together and act like smart public administrators who don't want to waste money. They are being forced to waste money because of the lack of an authorization. And so, Secretary Todd, I'm sorry, I was supposed to ask more questions, but I got a little wound up. Um, Secretary Todman, I want you to just walk us through what the human impact will be, set the DR authorization aside, if we don't fund CDBG DR for Maui, what will happen to these Maui families? Well, I think that at some point, um, there's going to be a need to shut down some of the temporary um, housing arrangements that families have, and notwithstanding, I'm sure, what will be great attempts by the governor and the Maui County mayor and yourself, some of those people will leave Maui. 
some of those folks, if they don't find a home, may be rendered homeless, which of course is not something any of us want. But inevitably, not having those homes rebuilt means that Maui will continue to have an acute housing crisis, um, which it had even prior to the wildfires. So I think it will impact not just the victims and the survivors, but everybody who lives on the island. Thank you, Secretary, and thank you to all of you. We are about to hopefully spend some number of tens of billions of dollars on disasters across the country. But as Senator Tillis said, and Senator Fisher said, and I am trying to emphasize, we don't have to do it unintelligently. And so as we, I know we're appropriators and not authorizers, but we are all members of the United States Senate who have influence and who sit on authorizing committees. There is no reason we should spend this amount of money in a way that is so clunky that the aid doesn't get to the people or that we spend more money than we ought to. Thank you very much.